Amen, amen. We have another special treat today. Amen. We have the man of God, liberal Democrat, that's going to be sharing the word of life with us today. Amen. So we thank God for him. We thank God for Prophetess Darlene. We thank God for our co-host, Sister Ruby Larry. We thank God for Sister Albertine. Thank God for the Jones family. I want you all to continue to pray for Evangelist Cummins. Had an opportunity to talk with her husband last night, so we want you to sincerely keep on praying for this woman of God. Amen. Amen. We're going to see if Sister Albertine can open up with us for, with the word of prayer, and then we're going to get right on into the word of God. Amen. Amen. So we're going to amen. If, uh, Albertine can open up with the word of prayer. God bless you, woman of God. God bless you, Evangelist Bernard. I just had to pull over. I was driving. So okay. I'm just pulling over right now. My Heavenly Father, we just come to you today, Father God, on this Christmas Eve. We yes, thank you, Father God, and we glorify your holy name. You are mm. King of kings and Lord of lords, and you are God all by yourself, Father God. And I just want to thank you for allowing us to rise this morning, Father God, because you didn't have to do it. I thank you, Father God, for our health, Father God. I thank you, Father God, for us being with you and guiding you, guiding us, and protecting us. You said a good man's steps is ordered by the Lord. Thank you, Father God, for ordering our steps, Father God. Thank you for all the callers today, Father God. And I pray, Lord, that this blessing, okay. this message from liberal Democrat, Father God, will be a blessing, a blessing to so many, and, and not only to bless us, but allow us to go and bless someone else with this word today, Father God. God bless him. God bless the callers, Father God. God bless, uh, be with us, protect us, guide us, and just, and, Thank you, Father God, because we know you are Lord, and you are Lord God all by yourself, and we just want to celebrate you today, Father God, and we just want to lift you up and say hallelujah, which is the highest praise. So we give you you all the glory, Father God, and hallelujah, Father God, and we thank you and we glorify your holy name, because you are King of kings and Lord of lords, and you are God all by yourself, and we just want to say glory, and thank you, Father God. Thank you for allowing us to rise this morning, Father God. Thank you for giving us the will, Father God. Thank you for giving us your word, Father God. So many are so less fortunate, Father God. So many are shut in. So many don't have families, Father God. So many are homeless. But I thank you, Father God, for just allowing us to just have the things that we have and being able to fellowship that we we are. And we thank you, Father God, and we live continue to lift your name. And in Jesus' name, we say thank you, Father God. We glorify your name. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Can we just give God some praise today? Hallelujah. Just thank him for who he is. That glory to God. Mm, that's all right, Holy. Anything to do. Ah, hallelujah. Listen, Lord, hallelujah, Lord. I thank you and I bless you and I praise you for just who you are. Mm. Because mm. of who you are. We uh-huh. give you glory because of who you are. We give you praise because yes, God. of who you are. We will live in our hearts and say, "Lord, we worship you yeah. of who you are." Oh, yeah, uh, you, thank you, God. You know, as we begin to think about this year, Amen. The name of the the title of this segment is a time of reflection. This is a time when we reflect upon God's goodness. This is a time when we reflect upon his mercy. We reflect upon his grace, his kindness, his long suffering towards us. For if it had not been for the Lord, ah, God, that was on our side, where would we be today? I think about all the trials, the tribulations, amen. But you know what? There's always a brighter day. Trouble don't last always. Ah, glory to God. And even when trouble comes to the saints of God, God gives us a peace. He gives us a joy. He gives us a special love to get us through. Amen. I thank you all for fasting for those 21 days. Those of you that made the sacrifice, expect your blessing. Hey, glory to God. Expect 
effective and don't stop. Let this be a habit. Yeah. Put it in your schedule and make up your mind that this year I'm going to see the king. Every day I'm going to set some time aside to see. Spend some time with the Lord. I'm going to talk with him. I'm going to get in a quiet place. If I have to go and sit in my car for 30 minutes or an hour, all alone, hey, glory with nobody but me and Jesus, I'm going to talk to him. Hey, I'm going to tell him about my troubles. I'm going to tell him, hey, hallelujah, that, Lord, I need a touch from you. Just one touch. Just one touch from the master. It'll change your life. It'll transform your mind. Amen. Oh, I bless you today. I'm going to stop because we got a mighty man of God that's going to bring the word to us today. Amen. So with no further ado, hallelujah, we want to say to each and every one of you all, we pray that you have a joyous and blessed and successful and beautiful and lovely holiday. Be careful if you're driving to and fro because there's some drunk drivers on the road. Mm. Hallelujah. But I'm asking the angels to go with everyone that comes on this line, everyone that visit on the internet, in the chat room. I'm asking God angels to be with you this holiday season. Amen, amen. Don't let nothing come up on you unexpectedly. Amen. Hallelujah. So have a blessed and beautiful Christmas and remember to celebrate Jesus. Remember to show some love to somebody. Hallelujah. Show them, give them a smile. Give them a hello. Give them a how you doing. Say something that will uplift this season. Nothing to discourage. Amen. So we just thankful for the man of God. We truly have 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 embraced this man of God. He is one of ours. He belongs to the royal family. Hey, glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, God bless us to meet him. We thank God that God bless us. Amen. To be able to have this divine connection, Amen. And we, I don't let go of divine connections. Ah, uh, uh, some connections. Hallelujah. I do I let so, I let go of some of that. Now, oh, but when it's a divine connection, God is in it. Amen. And you can't let go of divine connections because that's what's going to connect you with the higher power. That's what's going to get you to your next level. Amen. So we thank God for the man of God. So we introduce to some and present to others the man of God that will that will be bringing the word of light to us today, and that's none other than liberal Democrat that held out of Los Angeles, California. God bless you, man of God. Amen, amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. I, I, heard, I heard the young ones singing them songs of Zion. <laughs> Amen, 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 hallelujah, amen. The Bible says, raise them up in the way, amen. So when they get to a certain age, they will not depart, amen, amen. I'm going to listen to testimonies and stuff like that, amen. I got about people, how they stray away, but they always remember how he was raised up in the church, Amen to God, and 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 that 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 gets them because it's like some seed going into them. So that's just this encouragement, Amen to God, that when you you raise your children up and then they go astray, Amen. Don't worry about it, Amen, because you planted the seed, Amen. And we got to learn that certain things don't belong to us. Hallelujah, right? Amen, Amen to God. We got to start, Amen to God, giving things. Over to Jesus, amen. So we thank and praise God, hallelujah, Lord, in the name of Jesus. We ask, amen, to God, that you will, amen, bless each and every soul that's listening, amen, to God, whether they're listening now, later on tonight, amen, if they're listening in their car, God, cover them in the name of Jesus, amen, to God, hallelujah, they're on their phone right now, amen, we pray, God, that you cover them, oh God, and protect, amen, to God, those devices, amen, to God, we cancel the assignment that's coming against these computers and coming against these telephones, we cancel the 
assignments in the name of Jesus. So those spirits, amen, the God that tempted them on these holidays, the, those spirits of depression, oh God, those spirits of depression, amen. We come against those spirits right now in the name of Jesus, and we begin to, amen, the God, come in the atmosphere, amen, that they will invite you, oh God, hallelujah, into this particular day, amen, oh God, where it seems like we're moving everything out of the way, but oh God, from this prayer, amen, oh God, begin to invite you back, oh God, we're in, they were, oh, amen, oh God, filled up with stuff, amen, oh God, so much so they didn't have room for you, amen, oh God, but we pray right now, oh God, that they have room for you, and that they will be blessed, and that they will be healed, and that they will be, amen, oh God, victorious, and that they will, amen, have ears to hear, amen, as this message go forward, oh God, hallelujah, oh, take my tongue, oh God, hallelujah, God, in the name of Jesus, that we can, amen, oh God, begin to put stuff over these bitter waters, in the name of Jesus, we charge every listener, in the name of Jesus, amen, that they will begin to use their palm tree, in the name of Jesus, and somebody said amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 We thank God for the holidays. Amen. Of God for the evangelist. Amen. Bernard, when she asked us to speak today. Amen. We got the call today about like about an hour or so ago. Amen. Amen. And amen. And God, he said, Amen. And God, we want you to say something on behalf of the Lord. Amen. So I thank and praise God, amen. And God, also for Amen, Sister Ruby, Amen. And God, the armor bearer, praying, Amen, that God is doing a thing. Amen. And what I was thinking about, amen, today and this, amen, this this whole week, amen, to God, about Jesus is the reason for the season. Amen. Jesus is the reason for the season. And as you turn on the television sets and stuff like that, you've been noticing that the weather is affected. And, 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 and somebody might even say it's unseasonal. In other words, amen, of God, this particular weather shouldn't be acting like this in this particular time. Amen, amen. In, in December, it should be freezing temperatures. But the weatherman, when you turn on a television, they said that the temperatures are unseasonal. In other words, where it should be cold, amen, the temperatures is warm. And in various parts of the city, those of you that's listening on this line, whatever particular city you're in, you begin to notice that the temperature in your city is unseasonal. And you can look up that word unseasonal. Go, go to Wikipedia. Go to Google. Amen. Go, go to your dictionaries. And, and just look up the word unseasonal. See, because this is how God wants us to be. Amen. Uh, amen. In the midst of of these holidays, and in the midst of our situations, amen, God wants us to be unseasonal. In other words, he wants you to act the way that you should not act in a certain situation. In other words, in the wintertime, it should be cold temperatures. But when you have warm temperatures, that's unseasonal. This should be cold temperatures because it's wintertime. So in the wintertime, it shouldn't be no 72 degrees if you're in the East Coast or somewhere where it's cold like Chicago or something. If, if, if it's wintertime, it shouldn't be uh, uh, 80 degrees, amen, in the wintertime because it should be uh, below zero. It should be in the 40s. It should be in the 20s. So 72 degrees is unseasonal. Now, I don't know who I'm talking to today, but God is saying to us, he wants you to be unseasonal. Amen. And I hope somebody is looking up that word while we're talking. Amen. Because this is a rhema word. It's specific to you. Unseasonal. So, in other words, just like, amen, the, 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 the cold air, amen, is not there in the wintertime like it's supposed to be. When your atmosphere begins to change, and when you're supposed to be sad because, amen, your finances is under attack, because your health is under attack, God is telling me to tell you today it's time for you to be unseasonal. 
In other words, amen to God, I'm supposed to act a certain way because of uh, the, the season that I'm in. I'm in a season of, 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 of something not happening right away. I'm in a season of, amen to God, I got a health crisis. I'm in a season of financial crisis. But in spite of the season, just like the weather is unseasonal in the wintertime and refusing to be cold, amen to God, I refuse to be sad in this season. Or oh, somebody said, amen to God, they're catching this rumor word. Amen, I'm going to be unseasonal. Amen, amen, you are mute so I won't hear you, but amen to God, I want you to say what you're going through right now. Say, I'm going through this, amen to God, and I, and I, and I want you to say what it is, and I should be sad about it. Hallelujah, but I've decided to be unseasonal. Hallelujah, amen to God. Now, and I want you to put that word in whatever you are going through right now. I'm going through this. Hallelujah, amen to God. But instead of acting like I normally act, I'm going to be unseasonal. See, God gives us examples with nature how he wants his people to act. Amen to God. In the winter time, when it's supposed to be cold, amen to God, God is stronger than any weatherman. God is stronger than any decree. So, amen to God, he don't care, amen to God, what month it is. Amen to God, God don't care what, what people say has to happen because God is an unseasonal God. In other words, amen, I don't care what I'm going through, amen to God, I'm going to be unseasonal. And those of you that looked up that word, in other words, unseasonal means not suitable or appropriate for the season. Amen, unusual, inappropriate, amen to God, for this time of year, amen to God, so in other words, amen, when I'm going through something, amen, if the season says it's cold, amen to God, and it's December, amen to God, I'm supposed to be freezing, amen to God, but God said, I don't care nothing about what the season says, amen to God, I choose, amen, to be an unseasonable God. Amen. So we're giving you this affirmation today because those of you that are turning on your television, God has showed you that this is a year of unseasonable events. And amen to God. And God wants you, amen to God, before he blesses you, before God takes you out of this season, amen to God, while you're in this particular season that you are in now, God says, I want you to act and it's time for you to act unseasonable because Jesus is the reason for the season. Amen. The season that you are in right now. Amen to God. We always talk about how the weather gives us examples, how to trust Jesus and how to talk to Jesus. Like I said, again, the weather is changing right now where you are at. Amen. Because of how the earth is tilting toward the sun. Amen, amen, amen. So so we need to ask ourselves a question. And I want to go to the, the book of Genesis. Amen. A very familiar scripture. Amen. Abraham's, amen, call out. Amen. Those of you that's on BibleGateway.com, if you're on the computer, you can follow us. Amen. And just read with us, BibleGateway.com. We're going to go to the, uh, the book of Genesis, chapter 12. And we're talking about Jesus is the reason for your season. So, I, 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 again, those of you, I still want you to look up unseasonable. Amen. Those, those of you just listening, look up unseasonable because this is what God wants you to act. Amen. Instead of acting sad in your circumstance, it's time for you to be an unseasonable Christian. Hallelujah. It's time for you, amen, to God, when I should be mourning, amen, I'm going to be unseasonable, and I'm going to be praising God. When I should be sad and depressed, I'm going to be unseasonable, and I'm going to give God a praise. In other words, I'm going to say hallelujah anyhow. Unseasonable. Somebody say, I am an unseasonable Christian. Amen, amen. Time for that affirmation again, somebody. Say it again, amen to God. In spite of this, now whatever you're going through, in spite of this season, amen, whether it's bills, whether it's relationships, whether it's, it's health, in spite of this particular season, 
I'm going to be an unseasonable Christian. If the weather can do it, somebody say, I can do it. If the weather can do it, I can do it. If the weather in the wintertime can say, you know what, I know it's wintertime. I know I'm supposed to be cold. I know I'm supposed to be blowing wind. I know I'm supposed to be freezing. But in spite of that, I choose to be unseasonable. Jesus is the reason, amen, for the season. The book of Genesis chapter 12 and verse number 1. It says, Now the Lord had said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee. And I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse them that curseth thee, and in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. The Bible says, so Abraham departed as the Lord had spoken unto him, and the Lord went with him, and Abram was seventy and five years old when he departed out of Haran. Abraham was 75 when God decided to do a change. Somebody say, to God be the glory. Amen. To God be the glory. Now, we are in a season of Christmas, of celebration, and, and, and what not, and, and we all remember the, the Bible story about the t- nativity scene about how, amen, Jesus and his mother was going to pay taxes, and on the way to that trip, they said that uh, Jesus' mother was pregnant, Mary was pregnant, and about to give birth, but she had no place. The ends were all filled up, amen, to God. They didn't have no place uh, for Jesus. And because they didn't have a place for them, the Bible says they had to go into a stable. Amen to God. Hallelujah. They had to, when, when everything was going on crazy, amen, when she was having labor pains, when she was going through uh, uh, contractions, amen to God, God had to say, Joseph, I want you to take, amen to God, Mary into a stable. Amen to God. And I'll be looking at things as types and shadows and, and whatnot because I believe that somebody, even in this particular holiday, is going through some travail on this Christmas. I believe that somebody on this holiday is having, amen to God, pains and, and situations. But, but just like God told Joseph to take Mary into the stable, God said, I want you to take my people into a stable place. Amen. In spite of their troubles and in spite of the, the, the problems that they're going through right now, I want you to find someplace stable. Amen. And the word stable, amen, when you look up the word stable, amen, why like everything else around you, amen, as God is going crazy, amen, to God, you are stable, amen, to God, where everybody else is worried, amen, you are calm and whatnot, amen, to God, you are acting unseasonal. Amen, hallelujah, when they couldn't find a place for Jesus, amen, God said, I want you to take her to the stable, amen, and when you are going through your situation on this day, amen, God has said, I want you to find a stable place, a, a quiet place, praise the Lord, amen, to God, wherein I can burst this thing inside of you, and understand that, that, that when tribulation comes, and when trials come, that's when God is trying to birth something out of you. But, amen, in order for him to birth something out of you, amen, while everything else is going crazy around you, when the weather is going crazy, when you are in a specific month and you're supposed to behave a certain way, the Bible says that you are a peculiar people. In other words, amen, you ain't going to act like everybody else act in the situation. I'm going to act unseasonal. 
Hallelujah. So if I'm unseasonal while everybody else is in a panic, and you might be in a panic about situations in your life right now, but we give you a word today, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen to God. That if you begin to be unseasonal in your situation like that weather, instead of creating snowballs, and instead of creating cold weather, amen, in December, you decide to be warm, God is going to bless you. Amen. In spite of, amen to God. So just like, amen to God, when Mary was having cramps, when Mary, amen to God, was, was about to give birth, when Mary was uh, uh, breaking her water, amen to God, when all that drama and stress was going around, God said, amen, Joseph, amen, I want you to take Mary to some stable, amen, he could have found any other place with any other name, amen, but he said, find a stable, and I'm talking to somebody today on this telephone, amen, to God, that I know it's crazy right now, amen, to God. I know you're going through some, some drama right now, but if you would just act unseasonable and find you a stable place in spite of, a Bible says, I will keep thee in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on me. So in spite of your drama, in spite of your situation that you are in right now, I charge thee to act unseasonable, amen, and find you a stable like Jesus did, and I guarantee you, once you get into that stable place, just like Jesus was born, that gift inside of you is going to stir up, amen to God, that gift inside of you, amen to God, is going to be born, amen to God, yes, I'm going through trying times, but if I be obedient, amen to God, and become unseasonable, instead of panicking, if I get stable, those gifts inside of me is going to be born, well, somebody said, I receive that. Hallelujah. Somebody said, I receive that. Amen, amen, amen. So, 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 Abram, amen, amen, in the book of Genesis, amen, the Bible says, amen, the Lord said unto Abraham, get thee out of thy country. Now, I said we're talking about to God be the glory. Because Abraham, Father Tira in them, they made their living off of making statues. And, 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 and idols and, 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 and stuff to other gods and stuff like that. That's how they made their living, by giving other things the glory. And many times, many of us, when things happen to us, we forget on this particular day that this is the time that we give, amen, to God, Jesus recognition. But a lot of times we're looking at Santa Claus, we're looking at that Black Friday sale, and we're looking at all these other things and whatnot, and whatnot, and we forget to give God the glory. Amen? So, so, so what was going on, amen, when God saw this, he said, I'm looking at Abram. Amen to God, and, 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 and Nimrod at the time had, had erected statues all over the place praising these gods and, and praising these things and whatnot. And God said, amen to God, and he looked at Abraham and whatnot, and he said, Abram, Get thee out of thy country. And I'm saying to you today that listening on this phone, when we're talking about to God be the glory, amen to God, we got to stop putting things above God. We talk about, amen, magnify the Lord with me. If I'm going to magnify God, that means I got to make God bigger than anything in my life that's happening to me right now. Because if I make it bigger, it becomes an idol, uh, idol. Amen to God. And God does not want us to be idolaters. So if you are right now and you are listening on this call, if you are listening and you're making something bigger than God, it's an idol. You're making it bigger than God. And I'm saying, and I'm saying to you today, magnify the Lord with me just for these few minutes. Make God bigger than that idol that you got in your life right now. I want you to get me out of that country, and many of us are living in idolatry. Many of us, amen to God, are making our problems bigger than God. But God is reminding us, amen to God, that, amen, he wants to get the glory. So you're going to have to physically get out of a place. God wants you to walk spiritually, amen, out of a situation. Again, I told you, God wants us to be unseasonable. In other words, amen to God, I know you're going through right now. I know you're having duress right now. But God is saying, amen, in spite of all of that, I want you to get your mind up out of the crazy thing, amen, to God. How the Pastor Hamilton reminds us about the mind, and now it talks about, amen, to God, get out of your head. 
Amen. It's time for you to get out of that place, amen, of God, and whatnot, and find you a stable place. Because if you stay there, amen, of God, you're going to talk yourself out of praising God. You're going to look at the situation, and you're going to make it an idol. Amen. A lot of us says, well, I'm not an idolater. I don't got no idols in my house, amen, of God. I don't wear no idols. But, amen, any time you make anything bigger than God, you just made an idol. Amen, of God. So your bill might be that idol. Amen, of God. That, 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 that sickness might be your idol. That, that, that situation might be that idol. But God is saying, amen to God, you are surrounded by idols and you didn't even know it. Amen to God. You said, Lord, I did not know, amen to God, but I made my children my idols. Lord, I, I made my job my idol. Lord, I made this my idol. But God is saying today, amen, get thee out of thy country. Amen. And from thy kindred and, and from thy father's house unto a land that I'm going to show you. And if you were an unseasonable Christian right now, Amen, amen. I'm trying to tell you, you're going to have to move your mind out of a place because the, the atmosphere is crazy where you're at right now. Amen, and God is crazy and, and, and it's looking different. So you're supposed to be acting a certain way right now. But I'm, I'm, I'm asking that if you can just, amen, to God, be obedient to the word of God. And, 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 and just like Jesus did, amen, to God, Joseph Daddy said, amen, Mary, I'm going to find us a stable. In other words, I'm going to find you a place where you can give birth to Jesus. Amen to God. And those of you that's going through gifts right now, those gifts that's bursting inside of you right now, amen to God, they, they cannot come forth until you find you a stable place in Jesus. The Bible tells us in the book of James, a, a, a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways, and he shall receive nothing of God. So, amen, amen, if you double-minded, God, 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 the devil knows that God ain't going to do nothing for you. The Bible said, amen, he shall receive nothing. Amen, no prayers answered. Hallelujah, amen, I got no healing. Amen, nobody being saved. Amen, because you unstable. But we tell you not to be unstable today, but in, in the midst of your situation. We ask him that you be unseasonable. Amen, and that you find, you will say, somebody say, I'm going to find me a stable like Joseph did. Hallelujah. Amen to God. I don't, I don't care what's going on. Joseph's wife was in travail. Joseph's wife was pregnant. Joseph's wife was hollering. Joseph's wife probably was screaming and, and, and was probably upset because they couldn't find a nice place to have this baby. And it would be nice if you could have a nice place where you can preach at. It would be nice if you could have a nice place, amen, to use your gift of healing. It would be nice if you could have a nice place to use your word of knowledge. But in the same times, God puts us in places, amen, where it seems uncomfortable, amen to God, but that uncomfortable place is where, amen to God, you about to give birth, amen, amen, somebody said, I found my stable, hallelujah, 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 amen to God, so, 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 so when, 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 when he went to go give birth, amen, when Mary had to give birth, amen, uh, Joseph had to take her to stable. Now, 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 every now and then, you can't go on your own. That's why it's good that you called into this prayer group, because sometimes you can't find that stable place on your own, because sometimes the atmosphere where you are at, right at that particular time, everybody is in a panic like you. Everybody is going through stuff like you. But every now and then, you got to get around somebody anointed. Hallelujah. The Bible says, because of the anointing, the yoke is destroyed. So when you get around that person that's anointed, amen, whether it's your pastor, whether it's your, 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 your prayer warrior, uh, your, your, your armor bearer, amen, find you a person that can lead you to a stable in the midst of your duress, in the midst of the drama that's going on in your life. Oh. Amen. It's time for you to be an unseasonable Christian. Amen. Uh, I'm looking at the weather right now, amen to God. And somebody said, I'm looking at it on TV right now. And, and I'll tell you, brother teacher, that the weather is unseasonable where I'm living at. It's, it's supposed to be freezing, but it's warm right now. It's unseasonable. Uh, amen. You said, I'm supposed to be crying when I'm going through this, but guess what? But I'm happy right now. I'm supposed to be, amen to God, like just leaving right now, amen to God. I'm supposed to have been done out of my mind. I'm supposed to be crazy right now, the stuff that I've been through. But I'm an unseasonable Christian. Oh, bless his name. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm a peculiar people. So God said, Abraham, amen, amen, I want you to come out. And they used to tell us a story, amen, about Nimrod, the argument that Nimrod got into with Abraham. 
Amen, amen. When, when, when Abraham was saying, why do we worship these statues? Why do we make the thing that was, amen, created better than the creator? So they say he challenged Nimrod one day and said, Nimrod, amen, it don't make no sense for us to praise all of these things. So why do we praise all of these things? And he said, amen to God, so I'm going to do something. Amen to God, I'm going to do something else. And, and Abraham said, okay, show me something. Now, 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 now the Lord said, and I just want to read this real briefly. Amen to God. Uh, the, let me see if I can find it. Y'all, y'all bear with me for a second. Amen. Um, there, uh, okay, I'm finding it now. It's a story I found um, on, online about um, this conversation I'm talking about between Nimrod and Abraham. Now, mm-hmm. now Tebus responded by saying that they are only statues and, and have no knowledge. Whereupon mm-hmm. Abraham responded by saying that you deny their knowledge, yet you worship them. Amen mm-hmm. to God, at which point Kira took Abraham to Nero and said, come here, boy. Amen. I'm, 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 I'm going to show you why, why we do this. this. This person tells us to make statues. He, he pays us money to, to make statues. And many of you that's listening to this broadcast have made statues. You done, you done made your problems bigger than God. So those are your idols. But here we go. And the conversation went on. And, and Nimrod proclaims to Abraham that uh, we should worship fire. And Abraham responds that water puts out fire. So why would I worship fire? And then Nimrod declared, all right, then, well, let's worship the water then. And then Abraham responded and said, well, amen to God, the clouds hold the water, so why should we worship the water? So Nimrod declares they worship the clouds then. Well, amen, Abraham said, amen, uh, the wind will push the clouds away. Amen. Oh. Then, then Nimrod got upset and said, Amen, all right, well, all right then. Well, we're going to worship the wind. And Abraham responded and said that people withstand the wind. And Nimrod became angry with Abraham and declared that Abraham shall be cast into fire. And Abraham, amen to God, is correct that there is a real God, that God will save him. Then Abraham is cast into the fire and saved by God. Now, now, now why did I read that story? Amen, because we get so caught up in worshiping things and the creature more than the creator. I said earlier, to God be the glory. In spite of what you see right now, God needs to get the glory. I know we're giving gifts right now. I know, amen to God, amen to God, we are celebrating right now, and, and we are having a good time right now, but we must remember that God is to get the glory. In other words, amen, God said, stop making them idols. Someone said, stop making them idols. Amen, amen, amen. If, if you're making it bigger than God, you're making an idol. You've been hard at work, amen, and you don't get paid for that job. Amen. And a lot of us, amen to God, don't you get tired of working, amen to God, and not getting paid, amen to God, for what you worth? Amen. But you've been, amen to God, on an assignment that you ain't getting paid for, and you've been making idols every time you're like, Lord, I don't know if you can do this, and you made that bigger than God. Lord, I don't know if you can do this. You, uh, Lord, my child. Lord, 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 this, Lord, that. Lord, my husband. Lord, my wife. And you begin to make these things bigger than God, and, and amen to God, you became an adulterer. And didn't even know it. Somebody said to God be the glory. Amen. But, 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 but God did. God said, Abraham, I'm calling you out of that adultery. Amen. Because it's time to give me the glory. Now, now there was a statue in that particular city that everybody worshipped called Ashata. And what Ashata did was, amen to God, she said that everything that happens is going to happen Again, that was their philosophy. Amen. What goes around comes around. Amen. And and and, and this is the this is the the, the the religion that they begin to have. They said everything that happened. They even looked at Amen to God at the stars in the heaven and whatnot. And they said Amen to God uh, uh, it was a circle. Everything moves in a circle. In other words, nothing ever changes. What happened before is going to happen again. What happened before is going to happen again. Amen. And God saw this philosophy. A lot of you thinking right now that I'm stuck in generational curses. My mother was like this. 
My father was like this. My sons was like this. And if it happened before, it, it, it looked like it keeps happening. And, and, and that's like idolatry. Begin to begin, begin looking at these generational curses and saying, ain't nothing going to ever change. And God saw that statue in the city of Ur. And that statue said that nothing will ever change. A chapter represented that, amen to God, amen, everything that happened before is going to happen again. But what God said, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you to get out of that city, amen to God, because, amen to God, that city, everything is going to keep happening like that generational curse because they call up in that atmosphere, amen to God. But I'm telling you, it's time for you to move out of that atmosphere, amen to God. God is looking at you right now and said, I want you to find a stable place because you had generational curses. You didn't have alcoholics in your family. You didn't have abusers in your family. You didn't have depression people in the family. You didn't have people with mental illness in your family. But God is saying like he told Abraham, amen to God, to God be the glory. It's time, amen to God, to get rid of these idols, amen to God. It's time to smash up these idols, amen to God. And it's time to give God the glory. Amen. Somebody said, I'm giving God the glory. Amen to God. They say, yes, I know it's Christmas. Amen to God. Hallelujah. But God, amen to God, wants a place, amen to God, that he can have the glory. Amen to God. God is saying, amen, hallelujah, amen to God. Right now, I'm looking in your particular city. Amen. And it should, amen to God, be freezing. Amen. It should be like 20 degrees. But amen, for some reason, God said, I'm going to show you that, amen, I'm bigger than what things should be. God is talking to somebody there and saying, I'm going to show you that, amen, God, things are supposed to be like this, but because I'm God, I can change it and make it like that. Somebody said, to God be the glory. Amen, God, it's time to stop praising these idols. It's time to stop saying that these things are bigger than God. God wants you to understand, amen, God, it's time to find you a place and be an unseasonable Christian. Amen, God, I'm not going to act like I'm supposed to act. Amen, God, I hope that somebody is looking up the word unseasonable. Amen, God, hallelujah, and that that's how he wants you to be, amen to God, from now on in these situations. When the atmosphere around you says, amen to God, you should be depressed. When the atmosphere around you say, amen to God, everybody else is married and they're happy and, and you're single and whatnot. And you're going to be alone today. You should be sad. Amen. I want you to say, I'm going to be an unseasonable Christian on tonight. Amen. When, when, when a minute comes past midnight, amen to God, and I'm, amen to God, on Christmas Day and Christmas night, while everybody else, amen to God, I might not have no money, praise the Lord, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, amen, give I thee, hallelujah, so when the minute past midnight tonight, hallelujah, you're going to become an unseasonable Christian, amen, hallelujah, Lord, I ain't got what I want, amen to God, but Lord, I thank you. Amen, for bringing me in a stable place anyhow. Amen, they tell me that the Hebrew boys were burning, amen, in the fire, but nobody caught fire. They tell me that they didn't even smell like smoke when they came out of the fire. I'm here to tell you today, amen, of God, if you do like Joseph did, and in the midst of your pain, and in the midst of your situation, and in the midst of your trouble, if you would take somebody with you, amen, and this is what I'm talking about. It's not just about you on this phone call. God wants you, amen. God, if you want to be delivered out of your situation, God wants you to get with somebody else that's going through a situation like you, and he wants you to pray with them and take them to a stable place, and if you find them, amen, and you take them to a stable place, that gift inside of you is going to be birthed, just like Jesus was born, when you get to the inside of the stable, amen, to God, your gift is going to be born, somebody say, amen, to God, I'm going to find somebody else, amen, to God, and I'm going to take them to this unseasonable Christian place, amen, to God, and we're going to even give birth. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. God just wants you to find someone. Somebody said, I'm working on my stable place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look at it. Look at it. Look at it. Amen. A reminder, a woman that's pregnant, about to give birth, and she walking. They didn't have no cars back then. Praise the Lord. Didn't have no, amen, Google Maps to, to find the easiest way there. So I can imagine they're walking a long way, amen, to God. I can imagine, amen, to God, while they're going there, amen, to God, it's a long journey, amen, to God. And I can imagine when they get there, and then they find out that ain't no place to rest. 
You can't be in no hotel. You can't be here. See, a lot of times for your gift to be birthed, it ain't going to be no pretty place. Lord, he said, Lord, I want to be in a mega church using my ministry. Lord, I want to be here using my ministry. But God said, amen to God, it ain't about where you're going. I want you to find a stable place. Amen, 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 amen. It ain't about, amen, the people, places, and things. God wants you to be in a stable place for these gifts to be birthed. Amen to God. It's all about Jesus. Amen. Somebody says it's all about Jesus. Amen to God. These gifts, amen. Lord, how can I give God back a gift? Amen. If Jesus is the reason for the season, amen to God, how can I give him the gifts? The Bible tells me once they got into the stable place. Oh, bless his name and whatnot. Amen. In other words, amen, she was still pregnant. Oh, somebody hear what I'm saying, amen, God. She still was having contractions. But amen, when she got into the stable place, she said, amen, God, this is where I'm going to give birth. And amen, hallelujah, when she gave the birth. The Bible tells me that, amen, Mary, amen, put the baby in a manger. Amen. And when you look up the word manger, you say, Lord, what is a manger? They could have put the baby in hay. They could have put it in a bed or a soft place. But the Bible says that they put the baby Jesus in a manger. A manger is a place where people, where animals eat out of. Amen. In other words, amen, somebody is going to eat off of what you just been through. Hallelujah. Amen. God said amen. When I look at the word manger, manger is where the horses eat out of. Manger is where the pigs eat out of. So, amen, Mary, when she gave birth, she put the baby Jesus inside of a manger where the animals eat out of. And I'm telling you, once you get into a stable place, praise the Lord, amen, those gifts inside of you is going to be blessed. And God is going to put you in a place where people are going to eat off of your testimony. Amen, people are going to eat off of what you've been through, praise the Lord. Hallelujah, people are going to eat, amen, off of your trials and your testimony and whatnot. But God wants you to get into a stable. Hallelujah. Somebody said, I'm getting into the stable. Hallelujah. Jesus is the reason for the season. I looked around and I said, Lord, how can I tell the people, amen, in spite of this crazy weather that's going on, how can I tell them, amen, to God, what not to do? Amen. In other words, amen, to God, if the weather is, amen, to God, amen, not acting right, why, 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 are we, why do we have to do that? Why, why, if laws is in place, I don't have to accept situations. Amen. You can like, 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 like when the man of God said, amen, I shall live and not die. Amen. You can speak to yourself. You don't have to accept situations. God wants you to be unseasonable. And we speak this word into your life right now that you can take this, amen, amen, into your Christmas day, into your Christmas morning, amen to God. And then you can take these messages, and when you read them, you'll begin to say amen to God in spite of my situation. Amen, amen to God. I'm going to find me a stable place in spite of the pain, in spite of the drama. Amen, amen. I'm going to find that stable, and a gift is going to be born. Jesus was born. The Bible talks about, amen to God, that when he was born, amen, amen to God, he changes every situation, amen to God, because of the Son. Amen, amen to God. If you're tilting toward the Son, no matter what you're going through in your life, I encourage everybody that's listening to this call to tilt toward the Son, no matter what the problem. If the earth teaches us to tilt toward the sun, and your atmosphere is going to change. Why shouldn't you tilt toward the sun? Amen. I'm not talking about, amen, you know, praising the, the, the planets. I'm talking about Jesus. I want you to tilt to Jesus on this day, on this holiday. Amen. When everybody else is going through and stuff like that, amen, as long as you lean on Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. And find a stable place. God will bless you. Amen. May God bless you. We hope we said something, amen, to take you through this season and that you can use that tool and say, Lord, I'm going to be an unseasonable Christian, and I'm going to make it through this. Somebody say that with me. This is your affirmation, amen, because when we hang up the phone, that's when the test happens, right? When we log off the computer, that's when the test happens. So we're going to say, Lord, I'm going to be an unseasonable Christian. Hallelujah. I'm going to be an unseasonable Christian. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And, and decree and declare that. So when, when the test come today, when the mm. test come tomorrow, 
when the trial comes, when you should act another way. I'm going to be an unseasonable Christian. Amen. Yeah. And just because it's like, just because it says it's winter time, it don't have to be cold. Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So I take my authority. Amen. Greater things shall you do, because he done went to the Father. Amen. The Bible says you shall receive power. After God. that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. You're going to have yeah. power to change your atmosphere. The Bible says that Joshua and them prayed, and God held the sun while they fought. Amen, and made it shine until every enemy was dead. And then he let the night come. I'm telling you, amen to God, if you walk into your season and you become an unseasonable Christian and you say, in spite of being outnumbered, amen, in spite of, amen, of that stuff going on around me, amen to God, I'm still going to find me a stable place. And I'm going to fight anyhow. Amen, and God is going to bless it. Amen, because I'm that unseasonable Christian, God bless you, and may heaven smile upon you. We turn back in hand to our overseer, amen, amen, evangelist Bernard. God bless you. Hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. <laughs> the Bible said, be ye ready. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We bless the Lord for the word on today. <laughs> An unseasonable Christian, amen. You got to be ready for when the weather changes.